Hi everybody, today um, we're talking about linear functions and their reciprocals. So just a reminder that a reciprocal um, is one divided by a function. So all of our functions today are going to be one divided by some linear function. So here we have just the basic linear function y equals x. So notice I made some sliders here so I can change the slope and the y-intercept. So um, I'm going to turn on, I made the reciprocal function here. So notice it's just g at x equals 1 divided by f at x. Um, so as I change um, f at x, g at x will automatically change. So you can see the effect that um, this has on the reciprocal. So this function right now then is just 1 over x because um, our line is y equals x. So our reciprocal is 1 over x. So let's talk about um, how these two are related to each other. So um, x, when you put in values for x, um, as x gets larger, um, y equals x gets larger. So as x gets larger, y gets larger. Now you'll notice um, for the red function, however, as x gets less negative here, or let's, let's look at the positives. As x gets larger and larger, y is getting smaller and smaller. So as x gets larger, y is decreasing. Now, why does that make sense? Well, it makes sense because you have 1 divided by that x number that you're putting in. So um, the fraction gets smaller and smaller. So if you go up 1, 2, 3, 4, you get 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, the numbers get smaller. So as x, as the linear function is increasing, this um, reciprocal function is decreasing. Okay, something else that happens is where this green linear function intercept, intercepts the x-axis, we have a vertical asymptote um, in the reciprocal function. Why does that make sense? Because this is when um, y equals 0. So if you do 1 divided by 0, you will get an asymptote. Okay, um, one more thing to notice, when the linear function is negative, the reciprocal is negative. That makes sense because if x is negative, 1 over x will also be negative. When x is positive, 1 over x will also be positive. So there's those three things I want you to notice. As the linear function is increasing, the reciprocal is decreasing. And why is that true? Um, when there is an x-intercept, that corresponds to a vertical asymptote because you can't divide by zero. And when there is a negative interval, they're both negative. When there's a positive interval, they're both positive. So how does this change? So let's just change the y-intercept um, going up and down or left and right, okay? So notice that the reciprocal moves with the um, linear function. So here, we're looking at the x-intercept here of 3. Notice that there will be a vertical asymptote there of 3. Um, where this guy is positive, sorry, where this guy is positive, the other guy is positive, they're both negative at the same spot, okay? Um, and still, I haven't changed the slope. So what happens if I change the slope? So if I make the slope steeper, you'll notice that that just makes the reciprocal even steeper. And again, the vertical asymptote moved with the x-intercept. Now, what if I make the slope negative? What do you guys think is going to happen? So here we have an example where it's sloping down. So that means that the linear function is always decreasing. So notice that that means the reciprocal function is always increasing. Why does that make sense? Well, because as y goes down, so you go down like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, the reciprocal will actually go up. 1 over 5, 1 over 4, 1 over 3, 1 over 2, 1 over 1, those numbers are going up. So as numbers increase, those reciprocal numbers decrease. If numbers decrease, those reciprocal numbers increase. Okay? So that's the basic idea. You can make the same file in GeoGebra if you want and play around with it um, and see what happens. Uh, but it's kind of interesting to see what happens with those sliders. So if we go to the note here, uh, we're just going to discover some relationships today between only linear functions and the reciprocals. And the next note, we'll be talking more about quadratics. So you can start by actually just sketching in a linear function and its reciprocal. So this is just y equals x. And then its reciprocal function 
<laughs> you guys are making fun of me. I know that's supposed to go straight up, kind of. And this is its um, this is y equals one over x. It's reciprocal function. Okay. So explain why these graphs are in the same quadrants over the same intervals. Well, the best way is to think about the coordinates. So if you have um, x, y as a point on uh, f at x, so the linear function, then that means that for that same x value, you're just having the reciprocal 1 over y on 1 over f at x, okay? So that means um, if x gives y greater than 0, then 1 over y is greater than 0 and, and vice versa. Okay? So if you have a y value that's greater than zero, then one over y is also positive. If y is negative, then one over y is also negative. So this will also hold for any reciprocal function, okay? Um, so yes, it holds for any, it always holds for any linear function and it's reciprocal, okay? Hopefully you guys understand that. Explain that why the reciprocal function 1 over x is decreasing when f at x equals x is increasing. Does this hold for the negatives and always? Well, yes. Okay, so as f at x gets larger, 1 over f at x gets smaller. It's just the nature of fractions, right? So, for example, if um, f at x equals like 2, 3, 4, so notice that's increasing, then um, 1 over f at x would equal 1 over 2, 1 over 3, and then 1 over 4. Okay, so in this section it's increasing, and in this section it's decreasing. Okay, and then you can make a, an example for the other way too. So if f at x was going 4, 3, 2, then 1 over f at x would be going 1 quarter, 1 third, 1 half. So um, that's why decreasing and increasing intervals will always be opposite. Okay, explain why the graph of g at x has a horizontal asymptote. What is the equation of this asymptote? Uh, well, the equation of this asymptote is x equals 0. Sorry, that should be a vertical asymptote. Oh, no, that's a horizontal asymptote. Okay. Um, will all reciprocal functions have the same horizontal asymptote? So, sorry, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Okay. This is because y can never be 0 in f at x. Sorry, g at x equals 1 over f at x because no value of f at x can produce um, g at x equals 0. Okay, so you'll never have a case, no matter what you put in the denominator, that will give 1 over something equals 0. That will never, ever, ever be the case. Because if the denominator is 0, then there's a vertical asymptote there. It doesn't exist. And if it's a big number, then you just have a small fraction. If the denominator is a very small number, then you just have a larger number. So there's no way that you can have just 1 over a number equaling 0. So for any reciprocal functions, all reciprocal functions will have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. So therefore, all linear reciprocal functions have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. Every single one will have that um, because you will never be able to get out 1 over something equals 0. Okay? So the conclusions are here for you. So all y-coordinates are reciprocals 
um, of the y coordinate. So exam for example, if 1, 2 is on, on f at x, then 1 comma 1 over 2 is on 1 over f at x. So for the same x values, you don't flip the x values. For the same x values, you have the reciprocal y value. You flip the top and bottom. Okay? The x-intercept of the linear function corresponds to the vertical asymptote of that reciprocal function. Okay? Remember, that's because this would give division by zero. Okay? So the reason that that's true is because you can't divide by zero, and that gives the vertical asymptote. So if something gives y equals zero on f at x, then it would give one over zero on one over f at x. Okay, so again, if you have f at x equals zero, that's the definition of a, an x-intercept on the linear function. That would correspond to g at x equals one over f at x, which is zero. And eh, you can't have that. That's a vertical asymptote. Okay. Um, when f at x is positive, 1 over f at x is positive, and when it's negative, it's negative. Okay, so we talked about that. Each function, every single one, will have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0 if it's a linear reciprocal function. And when f at x is increasing, its reciprocal is decreasing and vice versa. And again, I already talked about that. Um, now, another interesting conclusion here is that if the range of your function includes 1 and or negative 1, f at x will intersect its reciprocal anywhere where the y values are 1 or negative 1. Now, why is this true? Well, it's true because the only way to get f at x and 1 over f at x the same is if f at x actually equals 1. Okay, because you can put on the side here kind of, um, if f at x equals 1, then g at x equals 1 over f at x, which is 1, which is 1. So therefore, because they're the same, there's an inter point of intersection. And same thing if f at x equals negative 1, then g at x would be 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. So there would be another point of intersection there. Okay, so we'll show all of this with this example. So let's say you have um, 2x plus 1, and it's reciprocal. So the first thing we want to do is graph both of these functions. So 2x plus 1 has an x-intercept of 1 and then a slope of 2. So up 2 over 1 or down 2 over 1. And you can draw a line between those points. Um, Okay, I'm going to do it again. There we go. Okay, so there's my function. Okay. Um, so now I want to draw the reciprocal. Okay, so first let's note uh, the domain and range of f at x. So f at x has a domain of x is in the set of all real numbers in a range of y is in the set of all real numbers. Okay, because it's linear, right? Um, now let's come up with my reciprocal. So notice that I'm going to have a vertical asymptote where this has an x-intercept. So I can go ahead and draw a vertical asymptote with a ruler if you're using not normal paper, okay? This is, sorry, this is really difficult on the trackpad. Okay, so I have a vertical asymptote here where this has a, um, so we'll leave that domain and range. So my first thing I'm going to do is find the vertical asymptote. So the x-intercept of f at x, okay, so I set 2x plus 1 equal to 0. So x equals negative 1 half. So therefore, the vertical asymptote is, x equals negative a half, which I just drew here. Okay. All right. So that's the first thing you can find. The next thing you can find it uh, talk about is the increase and decrease. So notice that f at x is increasing on all x, sorry, on 
x and instead of all the real numbers, so it's always increasing. So that means g at x is going to be decreasing on its entire domain. Okay? Um, so our third point now is to talk about where it's positive and where it's negative, the intervals of, or the positive and negative intervals. So f at x is um, positive where x is greater than negative a half. Um, so that means that g at x will also be positive. Sorry, that's just a greater than zero in the same interval. Okay, so f at x is negative, where x is less than negative a half. So that means g at x will also be negative in the same interval. Okay, because they have the same intervals of positive and negative numbers. Okay, then finally, the last thing we can do is find the points of intersection. So to find the points of intersection, um, you set f at x equal to 1. And then you set f at x equal to negative 1. Okay, so 2x uh, plus 1 equals 1. Okay, so 2x equals 0. So x equals 0. So 0, 1 is the first point of intersection. Now we set x equal, sorry, f at x equal to negative 1 to find the other point of intersection. So 2x plus 1 equals negative 1. So 2x equals negative 2. So x equals negative 1. So negative 1, negative 1 is the other point of intersection. Okay, so there are the points where y is 1 and y is negative 1. So uh, 0, 1, that will be our first point of intersection. And negative 1, negative 1 will be at the point of intersection. So, in, so I'm going to have two parts of my reciprocal, one on this side of the asymptote and one on the other side of the asymptote. I know it's going to be decreasing. I know up here, because my linear function is positive, that this is going to be positive. So I can simply draw it close to the asymptote, going through my point of intersection, and then there's always remember that horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. Here I know it's negative since my linear function is negative here, goes through this point of intersection and goes again to approach the asymptote. Okay, and we can also label the horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. So that can actually, I don't know if this is behind my head, but that's actually the fifth point. There's always a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. So there you go. You have fully analyzed your original function and the reciprocal. Okay, so here I'm giving you the picture of a reciprocal, and I want you to come up with the equation of the reciprocal and the original linear function. So notice here that there is a, a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. So we can kind of draw that in. So there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 2, which means that there's also the linear x-intercept is at x equals 2. So that's good to know. All right. Um, so we also know that this is always decreasing. Okay. So the second piece of information we know is that the g at x, that we're given is always increasing. So therefore the linear function must always be decreasing. So it must, must actually have a negative slope. Okay, we also know that um, g at x is positive for x less than two. So therefore the linear, the f at x must be positive for x less than two. Okay, and the same thing can be said, it's, we know that it's negative for x greater than 2, sorry. So therefore, the linear must also be positive for x less, or sorry, greater than 2. Um, sorry, that should be 2 as well. All right, so basically, it's going this way and intercepting there. 
Okay, we also know that the points of intersection should be happening when y is 1, so there should be a point of intersection there, and when y is negative 1, so there's going to be a point of intersection there. Okay, so uh, we also know that y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote, and we can then draw this line. Okay, so going through these two points, going through this as an x-intercept, so you have nice three nice points to use a ruler and draw a very straight and accurate line. <laughs> okay, so I didn't do a great job of putting it right through the white intercept there because I wasn't using a ruler. So what is our f at x function? Okay, how can you figure this out? Well, we know that this coordinate here is 3, negative 1. And we know that this coordinate here is 2, 0, so we can just use those two points to find the slope and the y-intercept. So the slope then is y2 minus y1 minus 1 minus 0 divided by 3 minus 2. So you get a slope of negative 1. So you have y equals minus x plus b. And then you can sub in one of your points, like 2, 0. 0 equals minus 2 plus b. So b equals 2. So my equation is y equals negative x plus 2. Okay, so I can kind of work backwards to find the information um, to find the slope and the y-intercept. Okay, so I hope you guys understood the basic um, concepts behind what we were doing today. Read over these success criteria. Make sure that you can do these things. Have me re-explain things in class if you had trouble understanding. Um, the key idea, again, is to just think about the fact that whatever y value you get for a linear, it's 1 divided that by that y value for the reciprocal. So you have to think how that affects behavior. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned a lot.